Councillor Mary on the barge. I want to thank you all for attending this forum on posted speed limits on Route 66. We all have to travel out tonight. It's pretty cloudy out there, and it's to the point that it could be very dangerous. But I want to thank you for all being here. Ever since Margot Clary, the reporter from the Gazette, wrote almost a full front page in the Gazette on Monday, December 10, 2012, had caused a controversy regarding the posted speed limits on Route 66. And some of her statements were not correct. My husband Richard and I built our home on West Hampton Road 41 years ago. Route 66 has always been the same as far as residential way back then, except for a few new houses that were built on this road. Speeding has been a problem way back and still continues to be a serious problem now, even worse since the reconstruction of Route 66. We were forewarned by the engineers at our home that they did not agree with the widening of the road. They stated, if we think speeding is bad now, wait until the road is completed. It will become a speed zone. And they were correct. The history of this road is that the intersection of Route 66 and Florence Road had several deaths that occurred. And I was not in office then, but I did see a young girl in her early 20s, dead on the road. And when they lifted her body, her brains were coming out of her head. And I will never forget that the rest of my life. Many residents were concerned of this intersection. And we spoke out, and we had stop signs put in place. The intersection of West Stanton Road connecting to North and South Wellville Road that inter intersection is a problem, and it has become a dangerous uh, intersection. I have been working very, very hard with our building inspector, Louis Hasbrook, for the past year because of a site visibility that's such a big problem there. I have residents who just lived before that intersection and have serious problems getting out of their driveway due to speeding. And Eve could not be here this evening. She called me. She is writing a letter for verification that it is so bad with the speeding that she is having difficulties coming out of her driveway before that intersection. I have residents after the bridge on the right side and the left side who still have problems getting out of their driveways, even with the reconstruction of Route 66. Before the end of the West Hampton town line, the sign reads 25 miles an hour. And again, before the intersection of West Hampton Road, North and South Belleville Road, the sign again reads 25 miles an hour. Two signs in a short distance. How can this reporter say she did not realize she was going over the speed limit. She went 17 miles over the speed limit, and we take that serious. We've had many people that were very hurt on Route 66. She was given a warning, and I have to say that our police department was very kind. She travels this road every day, going to the Gazette to work as a reporter. How can you say you did not know you were going over the speed limit. I have a subdivision called the Ridge around this area at 25 miles an hour. And families walk with their children, and they bike, and they jog, and they meet me at the Bridge of Flowers, and we talk. Many people have stated to me, Consular, is this for convenience and not for safety? And that's pretty heavy. The reporter mistakenly reported that the police department stopped only 30 cars on Route 66 for the first 10 months of the year. 
In spite of those figures, they were given clearly and specifically to that short stretch at the West Stanton line. Our chief of police immediately emailed the Gazette to have a rebuttal put in, to be placed back in the paper. The chief had provided the Gazette with the correct figures of 571 stops slash enforcement from the town line to West Street Bridge during those 10 months. There has been accidents that have occurred right after you get off the Lowville Bridge, and I've been informed tonight from a resident here that there was another accident again on Sunday around 2.30 or 3.30 in the afternoon. It just does not stop. Coming down the steep hill, which was always called King's Hill, was another problem where accidents occurred and ended up on residents' lawn or in front of their houses and very injured. Many residents didn't want the road widened. Us residents wanted to keep the road the way it was accepted for the areas that needed to be redesigned to lessen the curves in the road. Several years before the reconstruction, many residents came to me and a petition was put in place to make no passing lines on the entire length of Route 66 in Northampton. People were driving erratic and passing people. That petition was approved and I have some residents here tonight who helped me with that petition. The only thing we were asked, if we were happy with the speed limits the way they are, and we said yes. No one was ever asked during the reconstruction, or even I as a city councilor, if we wanted a traffic study or a speed study done to determine the speed on this road and she was incorrect with her statements in the Gazette. In even talking with our Board of, Public, uh, Board of Public Works Director, who's here tonight, when I had called him and he had seen the second article, he told me some of those statements he did not make were not correct the way it was written. Due to the increase of accidents from October 2008, and on, at the intersection of Route 66, I found hard to have a full-blown light put in place. They wanted to wait until phase three to put it in. With the help of Senator Rosenberg, State Rep. Peter Kotak, and our former mayor, Mary Claire Higgins, we were able to have that full-blown light put in at the intersection of West Stanton Road and Florence Road. And I thank them all again for their help in making this intersection safe. The plans were designed many years ago, and no, and no bike lanes were in place. I fought hard to get them in place. We made a compromise, and we have what we call bike lanes. I told them, today is today, not several years ago. I said, we need the bike lanes. I have many seniors walking their dogs on these bike lanes, many families who run, ride bikes, jogs, and parents who walk with their babies in carriages. We do not have sidewalks. I have some residents who are disabled, and I also have some who are in wheelchairs and some who are deaf, who use the bike lanes and walk on Route 66. I have many children and youths waiting to get on the bus in the morning time to go to school and being dropped off in the afternoon. They all deserve to use Route 66 and enjoy a good quality of life. I want you to keep in mind the town of West Hampton is very rural compared to us in North Hampton. We are very residential and have many side street subdivisions along Route 66. We have Woodland, Cardinal Way, we have Lady Slipper Lane, we have Winterberry Lane, we have Dumpy Drive, I could go on. We have the Ice Pond, and we have the, the, the village at the North Hampton State Hospital. 
Just approved last year is a subdivision of 24 houses that will also enter from Route 66 before a bad site curve that's still in place. I, I just want to say that we're going to try to be as civil as can be at this meeting. I've had some people call me who were very concerned about coming to this meeting tonight. And they were afraid that what they had to say, that people would just look at them to say, how can you say, keep it at 25, keep it at 30 or 35. You don't live on West Hampton Road. I agree. The 35 speed limits are fine, but there are some areas of 25 that should stay at 25. I am hoping with this form that I have put in place with the help of my council president, Bill Dwight, and David Stevens, a resident of West Ham Road, who volunteered to help me. Thank you both. This is the beginning of best practices. Together, public input, regarding concerns citizens have or have had with Route 66. There needs to be a level playing field where all neighborhoods are treated equally and with respect. I feel all residents living on Route 66 need to be acknowledged and they are felt respected and led to feel safe and be heard. You are here to listen to both sides with respect of your concerns. We are too fast, we are too slow, or are we just right? Now I'd like to introduce our head table, our mayor, David Narkowitz, David Stevens, our resident on Route 66, and he is one of our um, narrators. And we have our city council president, Bill White, Jesse Adams, who is our councilor at large. We have Eugene Tacey, who's the councilor from Ward 7, and Councilor Pamela Schwartz, thank you for being here from Ward 4. And also Cam um, Councilor Schwartz, her ward is right after the intersection of the full-blown light on Route 66, and she does have an area two of concerns that I've had some calls from people from the ice pond who called me late this afternoon um, and trying to be here for this meeting. Um, and she has the level of speed limits like I have, where we go 25, 30, and 35. And welcome to Board 6. Good evening. Hi. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for coming for all the given circumstances and the weather. I understand it, it, it uh, might have been an adventure. The purpose of tonight's forum is actually to gather information. We, as a city council and the mayor, we do not have the authority to modify the speed limits directly. That's actually, uh, as Council LaVarge alluded to, it's a process that's done usually by petition to the Mass Highway. And uh, it's, so ultimately, we have input, but there are actually our uh, national standards that are um, reviewed when trying to determine speeds and speed limits, and it, it also has takes in a number of factors: accident history, speed history, citation history, of course, but also the construction and design of the road, whether it can accommodate various speeds. Um, so, with that in mind, we'll, we'll, the uh, David Stevens is going to take over. What we're going to do is do this in sections. Um, so we're going to work our way down from the West Hampton border, down to eventually to uh, the Village Hill location. And the purpose of that being it makes sense, so our AV presentation is a little hinky using the mayor's iPhone. So you'll see his family frequently and just things like this on and on and on. Try not to notice as I punch in his passcode. So <laughs> uh, and we turn it off so hopefully no embarrassing text will come up from the course of this presentation. The, uh, we'll, we'll, as we move down through the sections, if, uh, if you're an affected neighbor, or you, you, clearly you travel these routes anyway, and may have uh, uh, an opinion regarding a particular bend, a 
uh, particular intersection, how that feels to you, and what it is. And just, and I would remind you that we're trying to at least gather some sense of what the, the, the abutters in the community feel about traffic speed and volume on this road system. Uh, and with the caveat that there's nothing that we are going to, there's no action that's going to come from this meeting. We're not going to suddenly wave a wand to make something happen. That's actually not how state process works. And if you have a good sense of how, just how little power we actually wield. Uh, <laughs> so the, uh, uh, David Stevens is going to come up and he's going to, he's going to break it down for you. And I'm going to try and make the map work as well. So uh, David Stevens. I do want to recognize um, our, our mayor, who's here. I want to thank him for taking the time on his busy schedule to be here. The rest of the city council, uh, Owen just showed up, and I want to thank Owen for coming on in. Um, I do want to just acknowledge Mary Ann. Um, we've lived on the road now almost 20 years, and um, you know we talked about that dangerous intersection at Florence Road, and Mary Ann was the person who got us the light. It was right after somebody had died. Uh, we have talked about the fact that uh, the post office had people on both sides, you know, at one side of the street. So if you lived on the one side, you had to cross Route 66 to get your mail. Um, and she made that change. She had, uh, um, made the change about the double light, uh, the, the double lane. She also made the change about Route 66 to make sure that the Palmer uh, Highway, Palmer, Palmer Repay, uh, did a great job in terms of keeping Route 66 up to what the code should be. So I want to acknowledge her. Um, Ward 6 being our, our city councilor and for doing what she did. We appreciate all the time you took uh, making that happen. So we appreciate her having this form. For those who didn't know, she actually went door to door and dropped off little flyers in all of our houses to make sure that the people on 66 were aware of this form. As I said, we um, want to thank uh, the cable for being here as well. It will be taped and hopefully replayed. But we felt it made sense to break this into quadrants. So we could talk and focus about one area and then move down the road from the West Hampton line to Smith College. And the first quadrant we're talking about is from West Hampton line, just down from the, general, the old general store. Uh, Evie lives right there in the corner. And we're going to go all the way down to Glendale West Farms. For those who are, are familiar with it, that's where the landfill is. So we, we are coming down the hill. If you, if you take a look at the map, you see that the, the um, nope, you want to go that way. There you go. See where Loudville is? Yeah. All right. We're going to start right at that intersection right by where 66 is. That is the bridge, the bridge of flowers. Okay. And we come down that stretch. We go down the hill um, to, we're going to too far here, too far. Slow it down. Yeah. I can do this. Speed it. <laughs> <laughs> we gave the most technology challenge person so I'd like to people invite the people who would like to speak from the West Hampton line to Glendale West Farms. If you have discussion points you want to put forward on the record, um, uh, and I don't want to go too far, just discussion points you want on the record in that period that you want to increase or maintain the speed limit, decrease the speed limit, whatever, this is the time to come up. So in that quadrant is what we're looking for, from the West Hampton line to West Farms Glendale <coughs> intersection. If you have any comments on that, please come to this mic here and share your thoughts. Name. And your name and your street address. My please. name is Al Champagne, 1194 West Hampton Road. I live at the bottom of Kings Hill, on the inside of the curve. Um, I like to keep the thing at 25 because pulling out of my driveway is blind looking towards West Hampton. And in the summertime when there's leaves on the trees, I actually have to roll my window down and listen for the traffic. But you can't see them until they're on you. And at 25, at least they have a chance to slow down. If you faster than that, there might be a problem. Now, as far as the Loudville Bridge, yeah. if you're coming towards town, the first house on the right after the bridge, when they pull out of their driveway, it's a crapshoot. You can't see up the road. So 
that is one of the reasons why it's 25 and that intersection. But I feel 25 is on that section, on that curve, is the way it should be. Because I'm out there shoveling snow or plowing snow, and I have a garden tractor. I had to put a flashing light on it because if I'm out near the end of the street, people throw me the finger and all this other stuff because I'm, I'm on the edge of the road. So. Yes, thank you, Al. Okay. George, George Martin, 1411 West Hampton Road. And again, I want to thank all the counselors and the mayor for, uh, for coming this evening. Um, I actually live, again, sort of right at the corner um, as you sort of come past Loudville Road, um, across the bridge, um, uh, across from you know, the house that the uh, previous speaker mentioned. And uh, I, I'm in favor of keeping it at 25 miles an hour. Even at that rate, there's, um, there's a meaningful number of accidents at Loudville Road. There are sort of every, uh, quite frequently, I have my mailbox taken up by cars or not just plows, but people who sort of miss the curve during the winter. Um, you know, I've witnessed a uh, motorcycle accident that was, uh, that was fatal uh, nearby. I've got my children waiting for the bus, the, the school bus. Really, it's, it's, it is a major concern for us that um, you know, if the speed limit were actually raised, um, the, uh, you know, the safety of our kids would be something that would be, uh, that would be even more of a concern to us. And, I guess part of my issue is that even with the speed limit at 25 miles an hour, the frequency with which people actually abide by that 25 by mile an hour limit um, seems to be quite rare, particularly as people are sort of coming in from West Hampton. I understand people want to get places, but um, it, is a, it is a curvy road, it's, it's very narrow, and uh, particularly in inclement weather, um, visibility is not very good. It is very important for people to take their time and be safe and get, get there when they need to get there. Thank you, George. Hi, I'm Amy Andrews, and I'm in Glendale Road. Um, living there, we like, you know, my family likes to take walks, and I will say that Glendale Road is kind of a very unsafe place because there's like, really no sidewalk or breakdown lane at all. But when we get out to Route 66, it's nice to the widen lanes to take a walk. Um, we like to take the left and kind of go around up that curve, you know, towards West Hampton Line, and during that curve is like the scariest part of our walk because people never do the 25. They're always coming too fast. And when they're doing that too fast, they kind of like swerve into the lane as they're going because they're, the weight of their car or anything, they just, they kind of just, and it, you know, we, we always kind of joke about because we have life insurance for the kids, but it's just, it's, it is a scary thing. So um, that's just one thing I want to point out. The other thing is like the, the turn from on West Hampton Road that goes to West Farm to Glendale Road, they made it nice and wide, and I'm sure it's great for like snow plow trucks, but it's really confusing when you, people uh, people navigating that turn. And I don't know if at some point lines could be drawn somehow to sort of help direct the cars how they're supposed to make that turn because of the way it is. I mean, it, it, I just will say that there, even tonight when I was coming home, there was another car, and he was turning left and I was turning left, and I'm like, is he going to pull up far enough? Am I gonna? And, you know, he cut up in front of me, and it was fine, but it's just, I, I don't know if anyone makes that, but it, I think it's a difficult navigation uh, turn because it's unclear. Really, the line, the way you're supposed to make that turn. Um, and then the last thing I just want to say is I know I've had people pass me on Route 66 on the double line because they ever pass. And I know a lot of people complain it's too fast and it forces people to speed or, or, or people tailgate them. I just don't think that we should change laws because people are breaking them. I think we should enforce you know, people should not follow the law. So that's my last thing. Thanks. Well, I'm Peter Clary and I live at 130 Main Road in West Hampton. And same road. Um, I want to thank you for having this format. I appreciate it. Um, <coughs> I have an opportunity to speak. It sounds like I might be in the minority here, um, in my opinions. Um, like I say, where I live, the speed limit is 45 miles per hour, 35 miles per hour on the same road. Um, recently, it became the same type of road. Um, before a few years ago, the road at the Buckingham border was drastically different than the road in West Hampton. Um, I learned to drive on this road, so I live very familiar to me. First roads I drove on, um, and I remember when it was very narrow, very curvy. Um, anyone who was going more than 25 miles per hour was driving very dangerously. Now the road is wider; it is much less curvy. That was one of the reasons that the project, the road project, was done. And I, for the past uh, month and a half since this form was scheduled, prior to this form being scheduled, I have to admit I, I drove. I was comfortable there. Um, I didn't drive dangerously. 
Um, if I want to drive fast, I'll, I'll go on the highway or I can drive 65 miles per hour. I certainly don't want to drive fast on a road like this, but I grew up really comfortable. Since this form was announced, I have started driving the speed limit, exactly the speed limit. I put my car in cruise control because it's in some areas it's, you have to pay very close attention to drive the speed limit. And since then, I, I drive this road maybe once or twice a week. Um, when I can, um, coming in from Northampton, I drive what I consider a safer road where people are driving less erratically. Um, I have been passed five times um, on this road. Um, once on December 15th, um, I was passed near the Northampton border. Um, on December 17th, I was tailgated um, by the West Hampton border. On December 19th, I was passed um, coming up to Glendale Road here um, by a truck that had been following me since the border. And then after that, I was tailgated by the car immediately behind the person who passed me, and that person was swerving in and out, swerving in and out, as if they wanted to pass me, but I couldn't really get a cool spot. Um, January 17th, again, I was passed near the West Hampton border. And actually, I had one more that was on a different section, but I'm talking now. Um, New York House number 700 West Hampton Road, I was passed there on January 19th. I'm here because I'm concerned about my safety, I'm concerned about the safety of those other people on the road, I'm concerned about the safety of the residents of this road. Driving on this road at the speed limit, I feel incredibly unsafe. I feel like people are going to come up on me behind me fast, people are going to get angry at me. It seems like if I obey the speed limit, I'm driving in a way that will cause people to have road rage. It's very interesting to know that when I'm driving along in Stampton, toward Northampton at the speed limit, no one's tailgating me, no one's looking to pass me. I get to Northampton border, people start tailgating me, people start wanting to pass me. I'm driving from Northampton into West Hampton. People are tailgating me, people are passing me, people are appearing to get kind of mad. I get to the West Hampton border, speed increases to 45 miles per hour, no noticeable change in the road, no noticeable change in the density of houses. And these people who are very much tailgating me are way behind me. They're not, it doesn't seem like they're people who want to break the law. It doesn't seem like they're people who want to speed. It seems like they're people who want to drive in a rational way. So Castle the Bars you said that no one, you, no one asked you to do a speed, um, speed study. I'm asking you right now, please do a speed study. I'm not saying I know what the speed limit should be in this area, I just, but what I am saying is that I feel unsafe driving on this road at the speed limit. I feel like people are going to hit me, I feel like they're going to drive me into a ditch, and I hope this doesn't happen, but I may be one of those people you see on the side of the road in an accident because I'm not in the speed limit. So I'm asking you, please do a speed study. Please accept the answer to those speed, uh, that speed study and design the speed of this road in a way that complies with guidelines of the state, guidelines of the nation, and in a way that's rational. So I look forward to hearing from you that you're doing the speed, the speed study. And I know those take several months, probably at a minimum, maybe they take a year or two, but I look forward to hearing the results of that speed study when it's released. And thank you. Cece? My name is Cece Scott. I live at 1352 West Hampton Road. Step into the mic a little bit for the CC. Sure. Thank you. Again? Yeah. CC Scott is my name. I live at 1352 West Hampton Road, which is basically at the crest of the hill, the windy hill up. And um, now I didn't catch the name of who spoke before me, but I basically want to second what he had to say. Um, we moved to this to this house <coughs> shortly before the construction and, and the, the redoing of that road occurred. And it was very obvious that 25 miles an hour made a lot of sense. Since the road has been improved, we have actually noticed more in the way of people having difficulty in bad weather getting up that road because they start thinking that 25 miles, they can't even get up the momentum to get up that hill when, when the weather is bad. And generally speaking, uh, the issue of going 25 and then 30, it, it feels as if it's at least five miles, maybe 10 miles below what the speed limit ought to be. I have seen numerous cars come up there. I walk on the street myself with a dog. Um, I really do not think that the difference of an additional five or even 10 miles, I would say, 
generally 35 miles an hour seems right to me for that upper level, the hill and coming up to that. I do appreciate that people have a hard time uh, with, with folks coming by their house and, they, and they're worried about whether they can get out safely. I think that what would happen is that people would be more inclined to be watching carefully in areas where it's obvious that visibility isn't good, rather than focusing on their frustration with being able to drive on that road at a speed that seems reasonable. And I'm, I'm not talking major speeding. I too have had the experience of being tailgated, passed, and it's not just the speedy cars, it's trucks, it's, it's most every home. And I, I really would encourage you to do a speed study and, and really check that out because the difference between what the road was before and what it is now is, is really immense. I mean, it's very welcome to have it as it is now. But unfortunately, I think that the way the speed limits are set up is indeed an invitation to people to break the law when the law feels as if it, it doesn't fit. So I, I hope that you really will do a study and come up with a with response. Thank you, Cecil. I want to remind people we're looking at the quadrant from the bridge from the, the border down to Glendale West Farms right now. We'll move down the road in a few minutes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Blake Simmons. We live at 1075 West Anthem Road. Uh, my wife and I have lived here for about seven years. We actually just moved into that house. We had previously lived at the farmhouse, which is right at the bottom of the hill, the curve, the dangerous curve we all keep talking about. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I spent a lot of time outside in the past seven years. Uh, I, I, I've seen it all. I'm out there in the morning, I'm out there at night, and I've seen people during snowstorms flying, I've seen people when it's nice out flying. It, it doesn't make a difference what the, the, the weather is. I mean, um, people just fly on that road. I mean, I, I literally put rocks in front of my house, the farmhouse, when I lived there, the fear, because the road used to go straight in front of our house. We actually gained some front yard. We actually got something out of the road being moved. Um, we put rocks in our front yard because I thought for sure someone was going to drive right through the rocks, right through my fence, and end up in the side of our house because that's the way the road's been for the past 60 years. So I don't see how raising the speed limit in the most dangerous section that we all agree is the most dangerous section of the road, I don't see how that's going to help. It's only going to encourage people to go faster. Um, I've seen the police sitting out across the street from my house numerous times. We just had a baby this summer, so we had a lot of time off, and we would sit out there and watch the police just pull people over one after another. And, and you can tell who's doing 25. Honestly, you can tell who's doing 25 because they have five cars behind them. But you can also tell the people they're doing 40. And I've seen the people, the police let people doing 40 just drive by because they're waiting for that guy to do 55. So whether the speed limit is 25, 35, it's not going to make a difference. They're still going to do 55 miles an hour. And they do on a regular basis. I, I see it all day, every day. Um, as far as walking on the road, it's great that they widened it. It's, it's a nice wide shoulder. Um, we walk roads in the shoulder, but I'll tell you this. Every time we hear a car, I was looking behind me, even though it was a nice four-foot buffer. Uh, we, were, we were looking behind us, and we physically get off the road and step onto the grass. It, it's, it's, uh, it's a safe road if people do the speed limit and follow the rules. And, and, and since this whole thing came up, I drive down King Street every morning at 7.05. And every day at 7.05, King Street's 30 miles an hour. So everyone's doing 40 miles an hour right along with them. So, if we're going to raise the speed limit here, we look at every road in North Anthony because it's safe to do 40. Because I drive by a cop going 40, I'm not going to lie, speed, but uh, you know, I'm not, I, I go over the speed limit, um, but I don't, I don't push the limits. You know, I don't do 50. On, I, I don't do 50 in, in a 25 miles an hour. I do 30. Uh, I do 35. At least tend to let people go doing 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, but they always catch their full load of people doing 50 miles an hour in front of my house. So. Um, I don't see how raising the speed limit is going to help. I really don't. Uh, I think it's only going to be makes things worse. It's going to make people go faster. It's going to encourage people to go faster. Uh, we didn't make the road wider to make people go faster. We made it to be safer. So uh, I think doing a speed survey, a study of the road is, I don't want to say it, but I, I feel it's a complete waste. I'm sorry. But uh, and to the people that live in West Hampton that drive over every day, 
Um, I, I live there, so the, it seems like it's more of a convenience for a lot of you to go faster, I understand that, but does your convenience really trump my safety in my own yard? That's really what it comes down to. Thanks, Is it like, a convenience thing or a safety thing? So, thanks. And I do want to acknowledge Rosie, one of our new neighbors down there. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir. Thank you. Uh, so I'm a bit out of turn because I'm at 701 and I'm the next quadrant, but I have a meeting in Northampton in five minutes. I'll give you So I figured if you can give me the floor. I'll give you the floor, sir. I live across the street from uh, Marianne and next door to several people who are here, including Dave, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's a straightaway and it's a sort of downhill um, arena. And it's not uncommon that cars go 50 or 55 miles an hour in that spot. And it's totally absurd. And why should we succumb to people with road rage? I mean, I don't really understand that logic, to be quite frank. Now, I drive the road frequently, every day, because I live there. And it's not uncommon for me to go about 40 miles an hour. And as I'm driving along, I realize this is a very reasonable uh, rate of speed. And I'm, I'm like screeching tires around corners. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it seems to me that if one succumbs to um, people who, by the way, let me step back a second. Um, I also cycle a lot, and I have scooters and cyclists, like motorized as well. So if I'm turning into my driveway to the right, unbelievably uncommon, but common, is our cars that cross over the double line, cruising by me at like 50, 55 miles an hour uh, while I'm turning into my driveway. I just don't understand the logic behind accepting the fact that even though the road has been widened and made safer, that we should somehow accommodate um, speed limits, which are dangerous and not appropriate for the arena. Because, by the way, this is now becoming a populated neighborhood. It's not the old Route 66. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck at your next meeting. All right, so we did sort of jump to the agenda there, but is there anyone else who'd like to speak from the bridge, the border, down to West Farms? Let's move to the next quadrant. The next quadrant is going to be from the West Farms Glendale through to the Florence Light. Okay, as was just pointed out by our last speaker, that's kind of a straightaway that does go down. It goes down about 100 feet in elevation. Um, anyone would like to speak about that area, about concerns or suggestions they have regarding the speed limit in that quadrant? Please come up. And we again ask you to state your name and your street address. Hi, my name is Amy Singler. I live at 516 West Hampton Road. Um, I'm sort of, as, you're, as, the, as the straightaway goes downhill, I'm really about to pull everybody over. Um, and um, I just want to say um, 35 feels appropriate. Again, I agree. If you hang around 35 to 40, um, you get people on your tail. Luckily, I pull in my driveway before they've been on my tail too long, so they back off. But um, it, I don't think it needs to be faster than that. Um, and I definitely appreciate when the police are enforcing that speed limit. I think it helps. There seem to be times, I'm guessing, when they enforce different sections. So it'll be a week when I'm seeing everybody pulled over from my house in the morning, which is I cheer. Um, it would be nice. I'd like to build a bike the road to work more often. Um, part of me realizes I bought a house on kind of a busy road, so um, that's just something that I have to get. I have to get comfortable with. If the road's any faster, it's really it's really just not comfortable. I think for biking unless you're a really experienced biker. I mean, I know there's people that are really comfortable on almost any road on a bike, but I think for the average the average commuter, um, anything faster than that um, would be uncomfortable in terms of feeling safe on a bike. So. Um, Thank you very much. Brandy? Uh, Brandy John from 669 West Hampton Road. Uh, I think that uh, speeding is a statewide ep epidemic. And most cars drive 10 to 20 miles an hour faster than the speed limit, whether it's uh, on Mass Pike or on Route 66. Uh, I think that the speed limits in general should not be increased on West Hampton Road. 
One of the things suggested in the news article was that the 85% rule was governed. But taken out of context, it's absurd. There are many reasons for speed limits besides what speed the road may be safely driven on. That is, safely for the car to drive it. Um, the road is used by runners, cyclists, and pedestrians that must share the cars must share the road with. There are no sidewalks for a large part of Route 66, and there are driveways every 100 to 150 feet. Um, yesterday, I got in the mail, or got the UPS came like last night with the radar gun, so I could figure out what I was talking about. Because I can still remember uh, some talk about people speeding down near uh, on, on Hatchet Street and saying that the cars weren't really going fast as people thought. Um, I went out this morning, it was foggy, visibility might have been two or three hundred feet. The average speed in front of my house was 45 miles an hour, the top speed was 66, and the lowest speed was 35, which is what the speed limit is. This afternoon, I picked a bad day to do this. Visibility was about 50 feet, so the fastest I saw was 51 miles an hour, and the lowest was 32 miles an hour. Enforcement needs to be strengthened. Let's give the police more resources to enforce the existing speeding laws. Um, one of the things that I didn't catch this morning were very many trucks. There are lots of trucks, and they kind of come in from, east, from West Hampton. Maybe truck, trailer trucks full of logs. And they're easily going 50 to 55 miles an hour. So on a sunny day, I'm going to go back out. Um, I was amazed to hear that there was somebody that actually went to speed limit on Route 66. Um, this is my idea of being suicidal. I tried to do it. You get road rage, you get passed, you get tailgated, and uh, generally you piss off the people behind you. Amen. Thank you, friend. Yep. Steve? Good evening. Steve Lucas, 218 Turkey Hill Road. Uh, thanks again for the forum. Appreciate it. Uh, I guess my opinion this evening is that I'm seeing a few different actual issues here to me. One is the speed limits on the road, and the second is the speed enforcement on the road, followed by passing. Um, I heard some talk about some people who want to put the passing lane back in, which I don't think is a good idea, but also another issue. And then bike lanes and the safety of pedestrians on the side. So, so far tonight I've heard several different issues, and I think that, from my perspective, they need to be taken on into their merits somewhat individually, even though they, they do coalesce to inform the whole road. Um, it's my opinion that we should do a speed study for the, for the road from the West Hampton line all the way to Smith College, because I do think that there are the possibilities that our speed limits are not correct for the way the road is now designed. Um, but I also hear, and can tell you, I've got my speeding ticket on Route 66, shortly after it was reconstructed, and I was going much faster than I should, whether the speed limit was 35 or 45. But speeding is an issue there, and I don't think that you're going to fix that by making the speed limits 25, 15, 10 or 50. Speed limits have to be enforced by the police department separately from what the speed limit is. Um, in regards to passing lane, I'm not an advocate for that. I don't think the road justifies that with the number of people that actually live on the road now. I think the speed limit is reasonable or unreasonable. It's not safe to pass on that road uh, with the number of driveways that are present. I do think that there is a big opportunity for that road to improve on the sidelines for walking lanes and bike lanes. Uh, I'll hold South Street Route 10 as an example of that. We have a road there that's not quite as wide as Route 66, but pretty close. And we have bike lanes on both sides. We've gone through great extents now to make sure that those are uh, marked in a way that stands out with the green lines. And can improve along 66 doing something similar to that. Um, I do want to note that through Marianne's introduction, I heard a lot about a history of safety improvements along Route 66.
That includes not just the reconstruction of the road, but the light that was put in uh, at Florence Road, um, and the improvements that were made in the first section from Smith College up to Florence Road. And I think that we're going to be looking at that in the future as well. I see the intersections at where I turn off of Route 66, at Glendale West Farms, as an increasingly dangerous intersection as well. And at some point, it's going to need attention. Uh, and that's because we continue to grow. There's more population here. And we, we still rely on vehicles. I see the same thing at the intersection you're talking about up at the bridge of Bobbinville. Yes, it can be a dangerous intersection. Um, and we may need to pay attention to that a different way in the future. But I also see that when I drive on highways, which I happen to do fairly frequently, there are many times when there is a minimum speed limit set as well as a maximum speed limit. And that's because, from my perspective, it can be dangerous to be driving too slow on the road. And it's my opinion that a section from the West Hampton border to Glendale um, West Farms is too low. Um, to drive 25 miles an hour, that is an effort. It's something that actually takes your attention away from driving in order to watch your speed limit. Unless you happen to have a vehicle that can set cruise control at 25 miles an hour, which is too low for speed limit for cruise control in mind, the minimum barrier is 35. Um, you can't drive that without paying very, very close attention. And I think it takes your attention away from the actual road and driving. Um, so, I've said a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Yes, sir? Hi, Kevin Russell, uh, 686 West Hampton Road. And I think all I really want to say is everything Randy said, and I'm really bad I did, didn't get my own radio gun. Uh, I live on the infamous straightaway, and uh, I have a home office there, so I, I'm, I look out at that road all day, every day. And I actually time how long it takes to get going 35 miles an hour, how many telephone poles you pass. And without the radar gun, and low tech, I can tell you nobody gets 35 miles an hour on that road. And doing a study for the sake of increasing that would only encourage people to go 70 miles an hour instead of 50 and 60 miles an hour that they're doing now. Um, I've driven that road for 15 years, and going 35 miles an hour, I made a lot of people mad, and I really don't care. That's their problem, not mine. The speed limit is 35, it's our neighborhood. Not only people out there, animals, bears, deer. Bears have been killed on that road on the previous section we were talking about because people are going too fast. If you're going to speed limit, you'd see that animal. So I just want to say it's, it's, it's our neighborhood. Um, it looks like a highway of people coming in from places that, you know, out of the hill towns, which is fine. Um, I've been told, well, you chose to buy a house on 66 by those people. And what I say to them is, you chose to buy a house too far away from work if you have to drive that fast down that road. So, that's it. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the quadrant that starts at, at West Farm, Glendale, and goes to the Florence Light? Anyone else want to share any more information? Let's take them from the light down to Ice Pond. Okay? Anybody would like to come forward, come on up to the microphones? Um, again, we're looking at the quadrant that starts at the light, the Florence Light, and goes all the way to Ice Pond. Please, ma'am. Hi. Is it? Yeah. Hi, I'm Marjorie Snyder, and I live at 329 Rocky Hill Road. Moved about three years ago to there from the Hilltown, Williamsburg. So I used to live on 143, which was a crazy road that had a speed limit of 40, and people went 60. That was just how it was out there. So I moved to 66. And I thought, well, it might be a busy road, but I wasn't sure. And it's been a great place to live. Um, cars don't go 35 in front of my house. Um, wildlife does, we have a wildlife trail. I know they come right around the back of our house across 66 right there. We had bear going across, deer going across, flocks of turkeys. Um, so I have a concern from the environmental standpoint. I have a concern also from a taxpayer standpoint in that if um, as suggested, doing a safety study from North Hampton clear to West Hampton. Um, I assume it's going to be costly. 
I know that budgets from anywhere from towns, states, and federal right now are not good. Um, for me, a taxpayer, I'd like to see my money maybe spent studying um, bridges that are unsafe or having more um, police patrolling the area to keep the um, speed limits where they should be. I, I also think, I also know that a lot of trucks use the road to go to the quarry out, they go out to South Street and to the quarry and Burt Street's Road. They go past my house a lot and they're not doing 35. I cross the street to go to the sidewalk on the other side. It's, um, I have to watch, I have to be careful going across there. Tonight I went across in the fog and somebody was going about 40 and they came out of the fog and I ran, got him to the other side. So, um, for my sections, I think that the 30 mile an hour is perfect. Um, I, so, and the other thing is that the environmental part of it with wildlife movements and then the third part is taxpayers and is this how our, is this the wisest way for our money to be used during these budget times? Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in the quadrant um, that we're talking about, from the light to ice pond? Okay, we're going to go from ice pond to uh, Cole Morgan, shorter distance. Anybody in that short distance? Ice pond to Cole Morgan, please, sir. Frank Demery, I live on West Ave, which is a dead end street that abuts 66 right by Little Chapel at the top of Oxford Hill. And uh, I was involved in a minor, fortunately, minor fender bender right at Rust Ave, which has a obstructed view of 66. The, I didn't see the car coming. They didn't see me because another vehicle blocked our views. There was a baby in the car. Nobody got hurt. Their skin marks were 30 feet long. They were late for church. And uh, there's, uh, you know, people who are tailgating always have a reason. They think it's reasonable for them to be 10 feet behind you. But it's not. And just because a scoff law wants to sit 10 feet behind you doesn't mean that we should raise the limit. I'd like to know who is going to decide whether or not to request a study. I agree that it's going to be costly and unnecessary. That's about it. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak in that quadrant that we're talking about? Again, up to the Cole Morgan Light. Hospital Hill. Okay, we're going to go down the hill uh, to the bridge and into the uh, Smith College, up to the Smith College gate, the beginning of 66. Anybody from Cole Morgan to the beginning of 66 that feels that there needs to be a statement uh, or you have questions uh, you'd like to ask. Okay, I want to do one last thing and just say, is there anybody who wants to speak in general? about the distance between the bridge. Um, hi, uh, no particular, um, oh, Henry, yeah. uh, Winterberry. Um, so I don't drive on 66 a lot, but I do bicycle. I bicycle up to Alvin Farm, so I, I flip to the hill. And, uh, you know, my fear is people, it's the passing. I certainly don't support any passing lanes. And I think by increasing the speed, you would lessen the number of people passing. Um, as far as the bike lanes, um, anyone that bikes will also know that it takes the city uh, a long time before they take sand off it in the springtime. And I would like to request, you know, I understand in fairness to the city, they do it by you know, um, zones each year and they shift it. But I think a road like West Hampton Road and other similar roads should uh, get the sand removed sooner. I mean, it's bad enough that you have uh, storm sores in that narrow um, bike lane. But I, I support a, uh, a, uh, a speed study gets done, and, and I would like to see uh, speeds increase. Probably not so much in the section that you're talking about, but everywhere else. Uh, Back to West Ham. Thank you. 
Any other people want to speak in general, the Route 66 itself? Any other comments that people want to get on the record? Please, come on up, sir. Great. Yes. Um, in general, the road has been improved. It's smooth and wide, but the speed limits are laid out by, according to certain uh, physical uh, requirements of the road. It's a winding, rolling road with a lot of blind spots, a lot of obstructed views. I've talked to a police officer who was either citing or warning someone who was speeding, and he said that everybody practically in the police department thinks that people drive too fast on that road and that they should not increase the speed. And I talked to a person who works for the NTSB and investigates car accidents, and uh, they say that these rules are set up in general for a reason. Any other comments that people want to get on the record at this point in time? Is there anything from our city councilors that are here still who would like to have any concluding remarks? No question. Please, Steve. We do the speed study. What are the steps after that, taking the information from the speed study? Are we bound to increase? Do we get to decide ourselves as a community? What's the process? Okay. I've actually invited Barbara up here, who's the president of our Ward 6 Association, to write questions down. I want to write that one down because I don't know the answer to that. If somebody in the room would like to answer that, that's fine, but I do not know the answer to that. So, Steve, if you could come up to the mic because we need it for the cable to repeat your question and make sure we get it captured, and then hopefully the Gazette or Marianne or somebody can address this at the next city council meeting. Please. Steve Lucas, 218 Turkey Hill from um, my question is, if we do the speed study, what is the process um, after that study is done to evaluate the candidates collected? Are we bound to increase the speed limits? Are we recommended to? Do we have a vote? Do we have an opinion? Who, who decides the speed limit? And to pick up on a couple other people here, what's the cost of doing a uh, speed limit like that? Bill? Ed Huntley is here, and I've asked him if he could just sort of explain what process is how how and what how something like this is initiated or how it's not initiated and he has a remote mic so hopefully it'll work. Yeah. Is it hot Chairman? Yeah it should be Come on, Go ahead man. You're on. on. Okay. So the way the process works is that we do an engineering speed study out there which consists of studying on some uh, portable speed devices and making recordings for a couple of days of what the volume factor is and the speed of the vehicle. We're also required to do actually radar counts too uh, for a couple days also to look at that. One of the things we have to do on Route 66 is I think we have to do a speed study of the entire roadway and not segments of it because it is one roadway. I think that's what the state would want to see. You can do a speed study and never submit the results to the state if you didn't want to change the speed limit. If you found that you wanted uh, the 25 zone and you found out that the 85th percentile traffic was doing 42. There's some wiggle room in that. The state goes plus or minus 7 miles an hour, so it could go to 35. If nobody liked that, you never submit the speed study to the state. The state's the one that sets the speed regulations. The other way regulations are set is what's called prima facie, which is based on a distance and the number of dwellings that are in a particular structure roadway. So, um, example, with a very tight area is downtown where there's uh, dense housing. That would be automatically 20 or 25 under the Prima Fosse. When you get up to the rural areas of Route 66, the neighborhoods, it would probably go to 40 miles an hour based on the spacing of the houses. But we have a speed regulation. It's been in place since 82 or 72. It was modified again in 82. And that's the current standard that's out there right now, the 1982 standards that were set. Okay. Thank you, Ned. Appreciate well, it. Again, for those of us who've been in the neighborhood for a while, Silvio Conti got us that money. It was finally enacted and put forward um, just recently to improve that. And I want to single out Ned and his team who oversaw that project because I think the road is much safer um, 
constructed, it's a lot easier to drive into that road. I feel safe not coming down that curve as long as I'm basically doing the speed limit. So thank you and your team who uh, not only prepare, help prepare and, and set and watch and oversee Palmer excavating, Palmer paving, but um, who maintained that road very well. So we want to thank you and your team. Any other comments for people before I ask the mayor to say a concluding comment? And then I have a couple more. I like to put him on the spot. <laughs> Anybody else? Our mayor. Can you speak from there? You can get up. Okay. Well, I just I want to again thank uh, Council of Barge for organizing this forum and thank David and Bill for, uh, for being the, uh, the co hosts. Um, I'm sorry my phone ran out of battery. I realized I needed to have it for this event. Um, and again, I, I, it's been great to listen and hear um, the comments tonight. Uh, you know, this is a process that Ned outlined it. You know, we did recently have a, um, uh, have a speed. We went through this process uh, in Ward 3. I know Councilor Freeman Daniels isn't here tonight, but um, there were some neighborhoods in Ward 3 that were basically um, dictated by that, that prima facie speed, that, that 35 default speed, um, because there was no speed regulation, so the state says it's default speed. So we did have to go through a rather lengthy process to speed studies that required you know, submittals to Mass DOT. Uh, it also has to go to the Registry of Motor Vehicles, which I never understood. Um, there were votes of the council. And in that case, that was a neighborhood where the speed limit was actually, uh, an actual posted speed limit was put up that was actually lower than that prime face of speed. So, um, and, and having been the chair of the Transportation and Parking Commission for six or seven years, we often heard from neighborhoods who came in and said, you know, think our speed limit is too high or too low, and um, our, our caution to them was always, you know, be careful what you ask for, because you may do a study and you may find out that it's actually not what you think of it. So um, it's good to hear the feedback from people who live on the road, and, uh, and I'll, you know, wait to, to hear, um, you know, what, the, what folks feel like in terms of on the council, um, particularly the ward counselor, about where, where we go from the information that's collected tonight. Okay. Um, I just want to point out, um, my friend Steve Lucas, I think you gave us a good, cogent discussion about the different parts that we need to look at. What is it enforcement of speeding? Is it uh, the road itself? What can the road bear? So I think you helped outline that. I would refer people back to that part of the tape to go over that because I think that laid, laid things out. Um, doing 30 miles an hour, it would take you from the quadrants we talked about 12 minutes to get in. Doing 40 miles an hour, it would take you nine minutes, a difference of three minutes to get into town. Um, for what that's worth. I want to thank our Ward 6 Association who helped co-sponsor with us, our President, Barbara, our Secretary, Ruth, who helped type and is taking notes. Mimi from the Ward is, is taking for the Ward 3 Association, or North Street Association. North Street Neighborhood Association. North Street Neighborhood Association. These tapes will be available not only in Comcast for people to go back and take a look at. If you have questions or comments to that, you have your six counselors that were here tonight. Um, Pam and Owen did have to leave early to go to home to kids. But we have our, um, what's your name again? <laughs> ward 7 are at large, and um, our Ward 6 counselors are here. Uh, speak, speak to them after the meeting. I want to thank you all for participating. And Bill, do you have anything you'd like to conclude with? No, thank, you. Yeah, thank you all again. And uh, I should point out that uh, Council Tacey is on the Transportation Committee. Uh, as is Owen Freeman Daniels, uh, since Owen Freeman Daniels buggered out. You can focus a lot of your more thoughtful questions to Councilor Casey. You know, he's, he's, he's been in the open the fires of uh, these transportation discussions for some time now. So I, I appreciate you all taking the time to come out in an evening like this to have this reasonable, thoughtful conversation. Thank you. If, if I had been here three weeks ago, you'd have had the chairman of transportation department, but we swapped that off after a year or so. Oh, you're stuck with just the vice chair. So that's probably why I didn't get a microphone. But anyway, uh, I was here just, I was invited by Council of Rivers to be here, and I will bring your concerns to Transportation and Parking, which I serve on with Ned Hudson. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Marianne, for organizing this. Thank you all for coming.